talk about how lupus affects pregnancy or how pregnancy affects lupus. Um, the first question which we receive very often is, I have lupus, is it safe for me to get pregnant? Okay, so the straight answer is yes. Okay, but there are some caveats. Uh, the first thing I want to uh, share is that lupus does not affect the fertility of the patient. So the disease lupus is not going to affect the chances of a lady becoming pregnant, but it can affect the success of the pregnancy. Mm. So the general dictum or the general rule of the thumb is that the lupus has to be controlled at least six months before pregnancy is planned. Right. So there are patients who just land up in the consultation chamber and say, I'm pregnant four weeks, six weeks. Now what do I do? That is absolutely wrong. So the discussion has to be there with the doctor that, okay, we are going to plan pregnancy in the next six to 12 months. What are the medications that we need to focus on? What are the aspects that we need to focus on? Right. So uh, what I tell my patients is that, yes, you can plan, but six months, your disease has to be quiet. There are certain medications which need to be changed before the pregnancy is planned. So that will take three months to six months for a rheumatologist to sort it out. The, the other thing is to look at what is going to happen to the pregnancy. Now, almost 10% of all pregnancies can result in miscarriage. Mm. This number becomes 20% in lupus. A small percentage people have an intrauterine death or the, uh, the baby dies after you know, 16 weeks to 34 weeks of pregnancy. Now, this number can go up to 4-5% in lupus. Sometimes the patients uh, have the baby is not growing well or the fetus is not growing well inside the womb or they might develop some complications like high blood pressure and other things. So right. these are the things that we need to talk to them before. Any pregnancy in a patient with lupus is going to be a special pregnancy, which means that it needs special care. Now, I don't want to use the word high risk because it tends to, uh, you know, give this uh, anxiety and uh, worry that, okay, this is going to be trouble for me. But what I tell my patients is that this is a special pregnancy. You need to take special care. I need to take special care. And the gynecologist who's treating you also needs to take special, special care. Right. Yeah, so I think that was the next question is, you know, do they need to stay in touch with both the gynecologist and the rheumatologist? And, you know, you already said uh, six months before, six to 12 months before, they should be having this conversation with the rheumatologist. Do they need to talk to the gynecologist from before or they can talk to the gynecologist once they get pregnant? So if the patient is having regular cycles, and uh, they are otherwise well, there is uh, no problems in terms of, uh, let's say, uh, obesity or you know, increased weight or polycystic ovarian disease where there is uh, uh, irregular cycles or some other gynecological issues, right. then it's okay not to contact the gynecologist from before. Right. Okay. But if they have any issues like this, where the cycles are irregular, there is some problem during the menstrual bleeding where it's high or low, then it's always good to take their opinion. Now, as a rule, what I tell my patients is that there is no harm in taking a consultation because one, the patient gets introduced to the gynecologist. They assess, are they comfortable with this gynecologist? Are they going to you know, follow up with them or there is going to be a change in plan? Uh, second is that the gynecologist may uh, give them some medicines to improve their uh, you know, fertility or improve their uh, chances of becoming pregnant. Uh, there are some medications that we give in the pregnancy planning, like uh, folic acid supplementations, which both me and gynecologists are, are giving. Right. So some minor, you know, points which may affect the successful outcome of the pregnancy can be addressed. During the pregnancy, definitely the gynecologist... Uh, is probably the number one treating doctor because they are very well versed at looking at the baby's health, uh, the problems which the ladies have. But if there is any medical aspect in terms of blood pressure, in terms of lupus uh, flare, mm. then it's the rheumatologist who comes, uh, you know, in the forefront. But it's always a shared care between the rheumatologist and the gynecologist, and they have to, uh, you know, uh, meet both of them. And the frequency of meeting the gynecologist is obviously more than the 
right right yeah so that was the next question is you know uh, some of the risks with pregnancy in any case uh, tend to be things like diabetes gestational diabetes hypertension preeclampsia uh, with lupus are these the ones to watch out for are there other complications that uh, people need to anticipate and be prepared for okay. so in spite of the disease being very well controlled um, a small percentage of patients may experience a worsening of their disease during pregnancy mm. uh, you know in spite of the best treatment and you know, the best medicines and the best possible care because some things are not predictable now if the patient has a pre existing problem because of the kidney issue they are on hypertensive medicine because of the use of steroids they have developed diabetes then obviously this becomes a very very special pregnancy because we have to look after the diabetes and hypertension as well mm. now during the course of the pregnancy a small minority of patients may develop high blood pressure and diabetes as well now this can be unrelated to the lupus because now we are seeing people who are becoming pregnant for the first time after the age of 35 years right so this you know you can call it little bit you know older pregnancies they have mm. more problems of hypertension diabetes it's more common than somebody who's 25 or 20 years old right so the medications for hypertension diabetes have to be adjusted such that they are compatible with the fetus and the well being of the fetus Uh, preeclampsia or high blood pressure is a normal or not normal or maybe one of the complications that we see in patients with pregnancy it happens in patients with lupus as well as normal patients mm. and it's sometimes very difficult to distinguish the high blood pressure is it because of preeclampsia or because of the lupus which is getting flared so there are some clinical clues and some tests that we can rely on but obviously uncontrolled hypertension uncontrolled diabetes and preeclampsia they all lead to number one preterm delivery where the baby is born by 28 30 weeks or even earlier the second is uh, intrauterine growth retardation where the baby's weight is less the baby right. is not growing well and rarely it might end up in the uh, death of the baby so right. these are the few complications that we don't want the patients to have and we try to address it right and and if they do i mean ideally uh, if they are managing it well or if they uh, you know uh, they hopefully don't have flares during pregnancy but you know do you have what percentage of cases do tend to have flares and what are the typical causes and how is it managed so if the patient is well controlled before the pregnancy happened and uh, you know they are on minimal medications with no uh, comorbidities of diabetes hypertension and things like that most of them a, a great majority you can say maybe 80% of them just sail through their pregnancies or they have very minor problems uh, 15 to 20% of the time they might have some problems like high blood pressure and things like that and a small minority 5% have major complications in spite of being well controlled okay right. the major worry which i kind of focus on is that how to sustain the pregnancy see the first uh, 12 weeks of pregnancy are the time where the fetus is very small it's in the millimeter stage and that time they can have miscarriage after 12 weeks when the baby needs to the fetus needs to grow at that time they can lose the pregnancy so in patients with lupus there is a condition called anti phospholipid antibody syndrome where they have certain antibodies which are formed in their body and these antibodies make the blood very sticky or they make the blood to clot now if the blood clots what happens the baby is deriving all the nutrition from the mother and between the mother and the baby there is an organ called placenta mm. which takes the blood from the mother and gives the nutrition to the baby. baby now if the clots are formed in the placenta then the baby will not get any nutrition so what will happen to the baby the baby will either become weak or die or there will be a miscarriage so in patients with lupus we specifically during the time that we counsel them for pregnancy we look for these auto antibodies it's a simple blood test we do it so earlier it was kind of you know thought that maybe if the patient has history of three or more miscarriages then we should do these tests 
uh, sometimes we tend to do these tests if they have a single miscarriage because uh, patients uh, are also very anxious to have a successful pregnancy. Mm. So depending and because it's a simple blood test, uh, I tend to do it because it, there's no harm. Anyway, they are going to get some other test done and it's going to change our management. It's going to change the outcome of the patient. Right. So if these patients uh, with lupus have no antibodies of uh, you know, antiphospholipid syndrome, mm. then a simple uh, you know, blood thinner like aspirin, which makes the blood flow easily, is enough for them to go through the pregnancy. Right. But if these uh, antibodies are present or there is a history of miscarriage or a history of intrauterine death or some complications in the earlier pregnancy, then we might have to give them, along with aspirin, uh, some uh, injections, which are called low molecular weight heparin injections, to uh, make the blood thin so that the blood is not sticky. Right. So depending on the complications that the patient has had in the previous pregnancy, uh, depending on the antibody results, these injections uh, may be given to the patient and this has to be taken throughout the pregnancy. So the aspirin tablet stops at 34 weeks of pregnancy, but the injections will continue throughout the pregnancy. The other thing that uh, we look at is if the baby comes early, are we prepared for it? So at the end of 33, 34 weeks, we give an injection of a steroid called betamethasone to mature the lung of the baby so that if the delivery happens at 35, 36 weeks uh, rather than 37, 38 weeks, the baby is prepared, the lungs are mature, the baby is safe to come. Right. So these are the few things which the gynecologist and the rheumatologist do as a team. Uh, to you know, foresee if there are only going to be problems and act accordingly. And uh, for the smooth uh, you know, execution of the pregnancy, give some medication so that the nutrition of the baby is not compromised.